asked me what was been preaching on, and I said love. And they said again. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I love love. I love love. So we're going to continue a little bit more in love. Um, you know, the church is God's vis visible manifestation of His kingdom on the earth. You know, us group of believers here, we're part of the church. And uh, the church... Uh, actually, let's, let's look over in Matthew chapter 16. I want to see where Jesus mentions the church. The teaching, uh, to me, any teaching on love and the love of God is, is so important because that is our motivation. You know, Paul once said, the love of Christ compels me. <clears throat> That means Paul's love for Jesus could not let him sit by idle. He had to say something. He had to do what the Lord wanted him to do. And, you know, this agape love. You know, the, when the Bible speaks about love, what, it's, it, there's different words. We have the word love, but it can mean different things in the Greek language. Like our language, English, is kind of, to me, it's kind of limited. You hear the word love, and we use it in, in a lot of different situations, but yet it, it can be very limited, it can be very narrow. Well, the Greek language is a lot more expressive, and it has more words for love than, than what we do. We just say love, and that's it. Um, so, you know, you have, of course, this filio, uh, which is a brotherly type of love. That's a love of affection, friend, you know, a good friend, brotherly love among one another that we as a church have that kind of love. And then you have eros, and that's more of a passionate kind of love. You see that in the context of a husband and wife. And, uh, and then you have storge, which is like a, fa a familial love. It's a family love. And that's the love between your kids and, and one another and your family. And then you have agape love. That, that's the word that, uh, when the translation came through, that was the word that was picked to best express the kind of love. And when we say love, we often mean emotion. You know, we tie the word love with emotion so closely together. But agape love can act without emotion. It's, it's a love that comes from your will. You know, when a, when a baby, a newborn baby, hey, where'd our, where'd our newborn baby example go? <laughs> you know, when that baby cries in the middle of the night and you've only slept five minutes the night before, what compels the mama to get up and go feed that baby? He cries louder. <laughs> that's why I paused David I was waiting for something uh, and there's that mama right now what compels is love it's definitely not emotion isn't it it's not emotion they don't say oh great I get to get up for the 18th time and feed that baby and I've not slept for 48 hours it's not emotion it's the love of the will you see and I've seen Christians feel bad because they go around, and I don't love people, and I know Jesus said you have to love, but I just don't love people, so I must be a really, really bad Christian. Well, the, the, the ultimate form and highest love, really, it, it, it's absent of emotion. I mean, it can have emotion. I felt the love of God so strongly before I could barely stand. I remember when I first got saved, I'd just be walking down the road and I'd just start weeping. I was, what's going on with me? I'm a nutcase. But what it was is the love of God. I experienced the love of God. I experienced His, his mercy. But you see, God commends his, his love towards us while we are sin yet sinners. Christ, He gave Jesus. And uh, so that's the highest form of love, is this agape love. Um, <clears throat> I heard the story of a... Uh, 
this little girl was getting operated on and she needed blood, blood transfusion. No. What, Randy, what do you call that when you give, when you need blood? You need a transfusion? Okay. <clears throat> she needed a blood transfusion, so the only match in the family was a little boy. Jimmy. I think his name is Jimmy. I think it's a true story. I'm not sure though. But uh, Jimmy. And they said to the little boy, can, can you give blood to save your sister's life? And he sat there for a second and said, yeah, if, if that's what's needed to save her life, I'll do it. So they hooked Jimmy up to the machine. And after a while, <coughs> Jimmy started looking a little pale. And the doctor said, are you doing okay? Are you, are you feeling sick? And Jimmy said, no, I, I'm, I don't feel sick. He says, I'm, I'm just wondering why I haven't died yet. <laughs> and Jimmy thought that when you gave blood, that was the end of you. <laughs> you know, I mean, if that was true, if it's a true story, wow, that's something. If it's not a true story, it illustrates the point. The point being, that's the kind of love, agape, laying down your life for people, right? And so, but here in Matthew 16, Jesus says in verse 13, I'm just going to back up a little bit. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked the disciples, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? The greatest question given by the greatest man. Who do men say that I am? Uh, that's something that everyone must answer. And some said, you're John the Baptist, some Elias, and others, Jeremiah, one of the prophets. And then he said, but who do you say that I am? Now he takes it from uh, just people in general to you personally. You know, Jesus is personal, isn't he? He's a personal savior. <clears throat> we often like to talk about things as other people, you know, but Jesus turns to us. Pilate said, what are you going to do with him who's called Christ? You know, that, that is the question of the ages, isn't it?